Thank you for attending the Student Organization Summit, and we hope you enjoy the following session. If you're viewing this workshop after the live premiere, make sure to visit our YouTube channel or official website to see an archive of all past discussions and workshops. And now, on to your presentation. Welcome, everybody, to Active Followership. Um, my name is Lance Thompson. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Involvement at Carthage College in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Excuse me, I have a yawning problem, so I might yawn several times. Um, so, Carthage College in Kenosha, Wisconsin, sorry. Um, and today, we're going to discuss um, followership and what that means to you uh, first and then taking some of your reflection that you've had and then moving towards what I've kind of found out there. Um, the reason why I am interested in followership is I've always thought of myself as a good follower. Excuse me again. And I wanted to research it a little bit to kind of see because I've researched especially in my master's program so much about leadership and all you hear about is leadership, leadership, leadership. We should be teaching leaders to be leaders, <laughs> leadership to leaders and you know all these things and I was like well <laughs> if everyone's a leader who's who's following these leaders? Um, it's like too many cooks in a kitchen you know? Um, so I wanted to put together a presentation. I started doing this with students um, here at Carthage and you know I had a little worksheet for them to do so I have some um, prompts coming up here for you to write down your thoughts and if you do do it like say on like an email draft or a Google Doc or something like that I'd love if you would send that to me. Um, That'd be great. I'd love to see your um, thoughts about these things. Um, so, first of all, here we go. So, the first prompt I have for you is, and I'd like you to pause after I kind of explain this one. Um, pause the video, write down your thoughts, and then, you know, start the video again. All right? So, what do you think of? Sorry, here we go again. What do you think of when you hear the word follower? And that can be anything that pops in your head. It could be a sentence, it could be one word, it could be whatever. So what what do you think of when you hear the word follower? Now, pause the video and do that for a minute or two, and then we'll get back into it. And I'll probably just pause for like 10 seconds here. Okay. So, what do you think of when you hear the word follower? Now, moving forward here to the next prompt. In what situations have you been a leader? Have you been called on to be a leader? Or in what areas of, of your life are you a leader? This could be at work. This could be at in a school setting, in a church setting, in a community setting, you know, or say it was in high school, whatever the case may be. What are the situations? Have you been a leader? Was there a certain, uh, say it was a team or sports team or whatever, or some sort of situation like a camp, you know, or what areas of your life are you in? This could also be parenting or um, you know, other ways. So pause for a second, pause the video, and write down a few notes about when you've been called on to be a leader or any situations where you were a leader. So, 
doing this in person, I would ask people, you know, what they've written down. But we don't really have that option for this. So, I will I'll ask. I would ask people, you know, kind of for the group to, you know, work on it as a one, you know, kind of. Um, but just kind of, it's more like self-reflection this time. There would also be points where you would just kind of talk to your neighbor or something. Um, I always get kind of nervous when that kind of happens at a conference. And you're like, oh gosh, I have to talk. But it's a little bit easier if it's just like one person, you know. So I usually go, hey, you can just share it with your neighbor or whatever. And then after people have kind of discussed it a little bit, then you might share with the group or that sort of thing. So the next question is, in what situations have you been a follower? Or in what areas of your life are you a follower? Once again, this could be in an educational setting, this could be a church setting, in the community, it could have been before. Um, you know, so this this is more getting you to think about not only of when you were in a situation where you were the leader, but now I'd like you to transition to thinking about where were times where you were in sort of a, a group setting or a group situation or some sort of um, team that you weren't the leader and you were expected to follow or be a support member of that thing or that group. So think of that here. Wait a few seconds, pause the video, and write down your thoughts on that. Okay, so next one. Think of a time when you knew you should not take a leadership role. So say, for example, say there was a situation where, um, you know, say it's a club, you know, you're, you're at some social club or even say a fraternity or something sorority some sort of greek organization say and you knew that you were more valuable to that like say you were more valuable to that thing or that team or that group as some as a support or follower than say to run or be elected into a leadership position or to you know take over a leadership position was there a situation or a time where you knew that you would be best not to take a leadership role and you would have you better you would have been better for that situation to be more to be the follower in that situation so take a few seconds pause take a few seconds and think about that All right, so um, at this point, uh, I'd like to share at least a personal thing. So in my career in student activities or student affairs, or whichever campus activities, whatever you want to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> okay. I've gone from, you know, assistant director to director to now assistant director again. When I was a director of student activities at my previous institution, that was fine. I, I, it was great. I, I mean, I loved it and it was something I have always, I'd always dreamed I would do and it was wonderful. But I did realize when I was kind of looking for other positions, you know, to, to move on, that that's not where I really am best. I'm best as um, someone that is a little bit more of a worker bee or someone that can be can assist other people than say being the visionary or someone that is leading lots of directives or that sort of thing. So for me in my career I've kind of found that I'm certainly more apt and more 
able to be not in a leadership position. So at least, you know, in general, like not as a director or a vice president or president or that sort of thing. I'm better behind the scenes or that sort of thing. All right, so next question. Why do you think that leaders need followers? So I'm going to pause here for a second again. Why do you think that leaders need followers? So pause for a second and then write down your thoughts and we'll move on. I say, I stop it. Okay. All right. Next. All right. So, next question, and this is a big one. Why do you. Why do you think personally, why do you think that there is a resistance to developing followership as opposed to the very big push for the last 10, 15 years to develop leadership? Um, why do we not also develop a followership mindset as well? Um, and that, that, anything that comes to your mind, negative positive, whatever the case may be. Um, why do you think there's resistance to even calling out something as being good followership or active followership or even using the word follower? Why do we resist to developing those type of skills? So, pause for a second and jot down a few things there. Right. Is the last one that you had, last small self reflection here. Next thing. So, once again, if you have been taking your notes like digitally on like some sort of word processor, or, yeah, you need an email draft or something, please email those to me. I love to check those out get especially for like if I'm doing this virtually a couple more times I can use those examples a little bit easier um, because I wasn't really like collecting these from people when I did this in person so if I could have some better examples from people that have done this then that would be wonderful so thank you all right so pause the video and think about can you lead by following or how would you describe that or define that all right so now your question might be why why do I care why does anyone care what's the problem leadership is you know where the, the money's at you know money talks bro um, so yeah <laughs> that's true you know that's if you, any any sort of business book you find on um, oh, geez. I mean, if you try and find lead books on leadership or any, or, you know, say presenters or whatever the case may be, a lot of leadership stuff is from a business mindset or a corporate mindset. It can be very hard to find them from any sort of other mindset. I mean, there's, um, you know, spiritual leadership or servant leadership um, and other sort of things out there but a lot of it is from that business and corporate mindset sorry I had a call come in that's awkward when you're recording so why um, and this is a lot of for me this is kind of a personal page like these are some of the things that I like to think about students should know how to be active followers um, especially you know a lot of the time when you're, you know, a freshman walking on to, you know, campus, um, it probably isn't your time to go out and, like, you know, be a leader right away. You want to make sure that you get your, your toes wet, you get your, get yourself out there, and, you know, you dabble a little bit. Um, and it's, it's perfectly fine from a, a student organization aspect to learn the ropes a little bit before you become a leader. 
um, you know, colleges, I mean, this isn't just colleges, but I mean, we push leadership, 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 should, you know, and then you get people that, you know, they go up for these elections and perhaps they don't get them and they just kind of quit on you. Um, but I like the, you know, I like with my students and my groups that I advise, I tell them like the, honestly, like the leaders are obviously important, but I feel like the members of an organization are equally, if not more important, because they're the ones that, they're the reason why the organization exists. You know, the leaders aren't the reason. It's the whole, the whole, you know, it's all the people following them and being a member of these organizations. Um, and one of the things that I like to, you know, and something that sounds kind of cool is you don't always have an opportunity to lead. You don't always get that opportunity, you, but you can always be an active and good follower. You can always contribute. Um, you're, you're not going to be in charge all the time, but you can always contribute to, especially when it comes to a student organization. Um, and it's a lot about like you know being a good teammate. Sure, there's captains on a team, on a sports team or any other team, but teamwork and being a good teammate. Like we do talk a little bit about that, and you know students and people get told like, hey, it's good to be a good person. You know, it's good to be a a team player. It's good to have good teamwork skills and all that sort of thing. We don't really tell people how to do that though. We're always pushing leadership stuff and not how. Do I best navigate this team that I may not be the leader of that in order for me to be the most effective or be the best help that I can be for that group so that's that's why I think follower stuff is important um, and what what is being an active follower like what does that mean um, it's a lot about having a desire to learn to learn about the organization or learn about what the, the group that you're in or that you want to be more involved with. Following directions. Um, my dad pushed this <laughs> an awful lot about um, the millennial generation because he's a you know he's an old you know grumpy boomer that we don't follow directions. We always want explanations for things, which is fine. I think people should get a if they get a directive to do something, they should at times get. <laughs> good explanation for why that is but he's like you guys just don't like you guys just don't follow directions anymore you always need like a reason for stuff i'm like yeah of course um but so this is a little bit different than my grumpy old boomer dad um but following directions is something that we do teach at an early age but it becomes less and less important or we hi we're expected to be the ones to give directions and delegate right but we're not really shown how to like follow directions and you know that sort of thing that can be a little bit put to the side um and being supportive um and, and helping and that's something that I, I i really like to um pride myself on is i like to be i like to be help i like to help other people no matter what and i like to do it in a way that is the most helpful and isn't you know full of drama or full of complications um, but so being an active follower, being supportive and helping the group, um, helping for the positivity. So you, it's because every group and every situation you want some sort of outcome and helping those things happen and pushing that to, you know, to become what you want it to be. Um, the other thing, as far as an active follower is appreciating the other people in the room you know appreciating the other people on your team really being that sort of person that's giving out um, admiration or you know some sort of um, well, I forget what the word I'm looking for but really helping be like pump up your team that sort of thing the other thing uh, being a good active followers is being an idea maker um, leaders seem to be the ones that want to be idea makers. They want to have the vision. They want to do all this, you know, this and that. Um, and that can be, it can be tough when you're the one thinking of all the ideas and trying to get the vision and doing directions a lot. So being an active follower is being someone that is willing to give the ideas and um, 
yeah, so being an idea maker, that is a very big part of being an actor pro. Then also being prepared to serve and to be that person that can um, serve leadership and make sure that the, the things do get done and being that kind of like worker bee. That's, that's, what, all, that's what being an active follower is all about. Alright, so... All right, take care. Okay, what being an active follower isn't. It's not about being a yes man. Or, you know, it's not about being someone that's go with the flow and just kind of carries out these directives blindly. You should bring you to the table at all times. You know, bring yourself to the table. Be be critical and use your critical thinking skills for your group. This is not something where this is an active followership isn't just about being, you know, a cog and you know the, the wheel. It's about being, you know, someone that's helping drive the car. It's not necessarily someone that's just a wheel. You know, you want to make sure that you are providing feedback. Um, and being an active follower is not about deflecting responsibility and trying not to, uh, you know, you're like, oh, I don't want to be a leader. That's too much responsibility. That's not, that's not the point. The point is that even as a follower, you do have a responsibility to the group or to the situation at hand. You want that responsibility. You want to be engaged. You want to be a part of that. Um, it's also not about apathy towards the outcomes. You want the outcomes to happen. You want good outcomes to happen. So that is what you want. You do not get to be the person that's just like, well, whatever, I did my job, it's fine, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter what happens. That's not what this is about. Um, and it's certainly not about coveting the leadership or having some sort of mutiny towards leadership to remove them so that you can then be um, the leader, essentially. All right, so what are some of the resistances <clears throat> to being a follower, being called a follower, or followership in general? Um, there's obviously a cultural bias towards leaders, especially in the American culture. That's something that is pushed on us from an early age, is, you know, be, the, be a leader. Um, you know, and you know, you have to, you have to take charge. You have to be this, this, this. That's just how it is. And being a follower is considered less than. Um, there's also a lot of confusion between follower as a personality type and follower as a role. Some people, you know, they're, I would say myself, I'm kind of both. I'm, I'm a follower in personality. I kind of like to... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in a lot of things, jack of all trades kind of person, but um, as a role, I think it's certainly something that can be a very positive thing. And as a personality type, it could be a positive thing too, but as a role on a team, it's, it's essential. And we need to be able to say that and to label people as followers without them being thought of as less than. So then there's also the resistance in that everyone should be leaders or everyone should be equal. And that certainly, you know, that certainly has its time and its place. But there's also a time for someone to step up and take a leadership role and for people to follow that person or that group or whatever the case may be. And it could be, it's, it can be obviously the best way to reach the outcomes that you want to. Um, so I think that's some of the resistance to being a follower. Oh, sorry, I, don't, <laughs> I forgot that I hit that. <laughs> some of the other things. Um, obviously the prestige and buzz in the word leadership and in leadership as a uh, brand and as in, uh, you know, mantra. Uh, it, there's a lot of prestige with that, you know. Not everyone wants to be vice president, they want to be president, you know. Um, but there's also a 
a way lack of positive models of followership. Um, it can be very hard to, you know, for someone to be like, who's who's the most famous follower you can think of? And they're like, uh, you know, probably the disciples of Jesus, maybe, or, um, you know, if you're thinking a team, it could be, you know, the quarterback is considered the leader on a football team and everyone else is following them. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just, there's just this lack of kind of like, what are kind of some important followers that you can think of? Um, it can be hard. So that's why I think there's some resistance there. And from what I found, the sources that I used. Um, these are the eight leadership qualities of followers. Um, so this, I'm kind of transitioning into a little bit more of the nuts and bolts of followership. Um, kind of went from self-reflection there to maybe a few things I thought. Now we're getting into a little bit more of what I've got researched. Um, some of the things to kind of, because you can pause and look at this, but um, a lot of, some of the things that I think are important as far as these qualities that, that, that they talk about is the, the serving, making sure that you're seeking to serve, servant leadership, that I think servant leadership as a whole is a lot about followership and other things. Awareness, awareness of the things around you, um, and being emotionally aware to the, the other people in your group, that can be a very important thing for a follower, the lifelong learning, taking initiative, not only um, getting told what to do, but you know, jumping on board and doing, you know, fixing, fixing or accomplishing things before, you know, things are brought up and kind of before they're really an issue, that sort of thing. Initiative is big, emotional awareness, serving, um, still accepting responsibility for a group even though you aren't the leader, that sort of thing. Um, and then kind of transitioning to how do you influence the leader? You'd be a resource. This is like social capital, you know, the social capital thing. If you if you build that, if you build that relationship with leaders or with their network or with the people around you, you're better able to influence those people. Um, you can also, there's no, nothing wrong with helping a leader be a good leader. You know, that's, I feel like that's, hi everybody. Um, so apparently my computer was stoked. My storage was completely full. So I had to delete a bunch of stuff in order to get back on track. Uh, so it's a different day. That's why I'm in different clothes. So I apologize. <laughs> this has been, this should have been a really easy presentation to put together, but it's technology is wild. Okay. So I don't, I don't, I watched the video and I don't, of the previous recording. I'm not sure where I really ended up. So I'm just gonna skip to this slide, which is the second to last slide. Um, and just kind of wrap things up here. Uh, so thank you for um, being with me here and, and, and working with me. So this last slide here is a lot about how being a follower takes a lot of courage it does it, it, it is it's a noble thing to do it's not something that should be frowned upon it should be encouraged to be a good leader to be an active or to be a good follower to, to be um, an active follower um, and it takes a lot of courage to you know take the responsibility upon yourself to be active in a group without being a leader um, and you should be challenging those around you, your other fellow followers, the leaders, um, participating in the progress and transformation of your group or your event that you're putting together, um, and always having the courage to move on if you need to, um, and taking that step that if you you know the addition by subtraction sort of thing if this is if you're in if you're in something and you feel like you're not giving your all and that it's 
better for you to, to move on and the group might be better off with other people around. That's totally fine too. So that's um, pretty much the end of my presentation here. Um, here are a few of the references I have used, so we're excited, that sort of thing. Um, so you can check these things out. Um, once again, you can send me a, if you want me to send me your notes to lthompson5 at carthage.edu, I'd really appreciate it. I think that would really give me a chance to re-record this at some point and or give this in person and have a decent you know, examples of what some other people have thought of um, in case you know those, those things come up again and or we just need some other things to talk about that would be great so thank you in advance for that thank you for listening thank you for trying to understand what followership really can mean and what it can do for um, in 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 terms of leadership, what it can really bring to the table. So thank you all. I uh, hope you have a great conference and have a good day. See you later. Thank you for watching this presentation. To see other presentations, workshops, and discussions, feel free to utilize our YouTube channel or official website.